The Polestar 2 is a direct competitor in the EV market to the wildly popular Tesla Model 3. I was in Miami for an event and rented one for a day to check out the popular Miami spots. This is the rental review of the Polestar 2. It's a beauty. Hold the home menu. Which, which one's the home button? It doesn't say. Nothing looks like a home button to me. Where is it? See it? Because I don't. What is it? <laughs> one of the downsides of becoming an owner of a nearly ubiquitous Model 3 or Y is that you now have a car that looks pretty much like everyone else, only available in five colors, a few of which are free, which is why you see a disproportionate number of white Teslas. It's the free color. But to get away from this, are you better off going with the peppy version of this startup's car? Well, it's not entirely a startup. In fact, their parent company is shared by automaker Volvo. Here are some direct components comparisons to the Model 3 performance. It is the performance geared model and you actually know it. I like when cars used to come with some more trim options to really let you know you are driving the performance model, the Z28, the Mustang's 5.0 badge, the STI's red logo on the back, and the unmistakable front and rear lips of the Integra Type R. Modern cars are a bit more subtle. No interior differences in the Model 3 performance, and you can only tell the faster model by the red brakes and the tiny red underline under the dual motor logo. My English teacher gave bolder underlines when she graded my essays. The Polestar isn't much different on this front. It does actually have branded Brembo nice big gold brakes. I love gold. And it also has yellow seat belts in case you accelerate too fast for your passengers to handle and get matching pee stains in the back seat. The, smell of it. the driving and handling are decent, but it has even more body roll than the already roly poly Tesla Model 3. The acceleration doesn't feel as aggressive. This is something that passengers may appreciate, but as the driver, I want acceleration so harsh that it makes me question whether a full throttle punch will damage any neck vertebrae, resulting in chiropractor bills through the roof, but it's worth it. That's the kind of performance that I'm paying for. This checks out when you look at the zero to 60 times of 3.1 seconds on the Model 3 performance versus the much slower 4.1 seconds on the fastest version of the Polestar 2. When you take it up to a quarter mile, things stay similarly apart at 11.5, by the Tesla comparable to all but the newest generation C8 Corvette and a still many car links behind the rear view mirror at 12.6 for the Polestar. This is faster than most cars on the road, but it just doesn't have that same neck whipping speed. When you hit the accelerator, it does definitely go. Now the suspension setup feels like it actually pulls the front back and the rear down a little bit more like a traditional gas car but with the power there all at once it does whip you back in your seat but it doesn't quite feel the same roller coaster neck whipping and Reducing a force as the Tesla Model 3 performance does. I'm not really sure why the quarter mile is a bit slower. 12.6 versus closer to 11.5 for the Model 3 performance. A full second is quite a bit in the quarter mile, but where you really start to notice it is 0 to 60. The 3.2 in the Tesla versus 4.1 and the Polestar. So it just doesn't have that same feeling, but it is very, very quick. It's faster than any other car other than the Tesla I've ever owned and faster than many cars on the road. I do like that they both have 20 inch wheels, but the Polestar has a little bit more tire. It's not perhaps as attractive looking, but when you're riding around town, you don't have to worry about potholes ending your day badly whenever you blow out a tire every time you hit one. The Pulsar doesn't have any automatic parking sensors. So when you're pulling up, there's no forward facing cameras and there's no sensors that tell you how far away from the parking block in front of you that you are. Much more of a stressful situation parking. It does have the backup camera, but if you're pulling forward into a spot, it essentially does nothing. Other little annoyances in the Pulsar, for instance, when you're typing in an address and you go to start typing, 
you can't see the numbers and the letters at the same time the way that you do on a Tesla. So when you need to type an address, you have to hit the number key like you would on your phone, type in a number, and then switch back to letters and type that in. It's a small thing, but when you're trying to type an address quickly to go somewhere, it's kind of a big annoyance. And it's all because they orientated the screen in this vertical portrait fashion. Uh, Tesla did that in the very first years of their models from 2013 to about 2017. Uh, but since they've switched, so I don't know why this new car uh, would go back to that vertical field of view. Also, anytime that you're doing anything with the screen, your maps goes away. And it seems to be annoying at first on the Tesla where it keeps half of your screen with the map open, but all of a sudden it becomes very difficult to get back to that map. This time it's pretty easy, but I've been stuck in these menus many times and it's frustrating to be able to just get where you want to go and you want to whip out your phone and use that instead. Now the Apple CarPlay, if you have your phone, should connect directly to this and be a little bit nicer of an option. I often feel like the masses miscategorize the Tesla Model 3 as a luxury car, which couldn't be further from the truth. The interior and exterior handsome but somewhat plain styling reminds me a lot of the honda civic from 20 years ago this isn't a bad thing it's just not on the luxury levels as say a lexus or a mercedes in terms of styling or interior materials that said the polestars 2 seems like it borrows much of its styling fit and finish from the inside and out of a 2000s dodge avenger this is a dodge which is strange given that it didn't borrow more luxury from its cousins at volvo it's kind of strange that even though this is an electric vehicle they still have a transmission hump in the middle that's something that's noticeably gone on a tesla leaving a lot more leg room for your center rear passenger this is much more like a gas car disadvantage of course this lifts up to a hatchback style has this cover right here and you can see there's a decent amount of room back here. And of course you have this piece that lifts up where you have all your charging cables and other things you can store down there similar to the Tesla. And I do really like that this is included to put stuff over on the side. But I do like having the maps and other features in the center screen. That is nice. Um, there's many more controls like a traditional car. You can get to your rear view mirrors, windows, all that stuff. This is not as intuitive. I like how Tesla has it right here, but you do have a traditional manual wiper thing right there. It's not super clear when you're in park other than this little red thing. I wish there was a larger P that went on the screen. Hardly any cup storage place. You only have one storage cup here. And if you bump this up, all it does is give you another cup, but there's like no center console storage. Tesla, if you remember, has this huge thing that's absolutely cavernous in the middle. The seats are okay. I do like the yellow seat belt. Lots of buttons and knobs versus none in the Tesla. The materials are not nice despite the fact that you likely paid 10 to 14,000 more than the faster Tesla. The range of the Polestar versus the Tesla is only 270 miles versus the Model 3 performance estimate of 315, which in reality, you know that the Tesla on a freeway is much closer to only 200 miles, but you do have access to Tesla's full supercharger network. So how much actual range does the Polestar have? I'd guess freeway somewhere between 170 to 185 miles, and you have no access to supercharging until Tesla finishes their compatible supercharger rollout for other manufacturers it's a decent car the range is okay the price is higher and it doesn't qualify for the $7,500 tax credit you get in the faster higher trim version the way that the Tesla does if being different is more important to you than going fast being able to charge and keeping more money in your pocket then it may be a good option for you I do enjoy seeing a better mix of EVs on the road but I was ready to turn it back in only after a rentals worth of driving more fun than the average rental car for sure and for some reason it was cheaper to rent from Hertz than a budget level gas car only about 60 bucks per day including all the fees and then not having to worry about filling it up with gas is an even better bonus perhaps the best rental car if you're not planning to drive it from city to city i do 
enjoy the competition out there this is going to force tesla to evolve more rapidly they do in software but their styling is very very slow to evolve and it's just more mainstream but i don't see how most buyers could potentially purchase this over the tesla 